This is Mark Canizaro, sports columnist, the New York Post, uh, out covering the Live Golf Tournament, uh, the Greg Norman fronted Saudi money backed uh, new uh, golf tour that's kind of taken the sport by storm. Uh, I had a sit down, an exclusive sit down with Greg Norman actually yesterday on Wednesday uh, and uh, sat with him for about 45 minutes or so and, and discussed a wide range of topics, uh, a, a number of which included uh, what is perceived to be Liv's battle with the PGA Tour, which obviously is a battle because the tour uh, sees Liv as a, as a, uh, uh, as a definitely a threat. And uh, Greg Norman insists that they've been trying to work with the, the PGA Tour. They've reached out to the PGA Tour uh, in the past and, uh, and never got their, never got callbacks. And uh, obviously Liv is, is stormed ahead. And frankly, uh, some of the things I talked to Norman about were just how, how much the momentum has really been snowballing uh, in terms of Liv and the PGA Tour and their commissioner, its commissioner, I should say, uh, Jay Monahan, clearly did not take this tour very seriously back in the fall. Uh, you know, I have on record uh, from some sources I spoke to that, that Monaghan said that he didn't think the Live Tour was ever going to get off the ground. And now here we are months later, uh, the PGA Tour is kind of in scramble mode. They're on the back foot. Uh, they've suspended all the players that have on their tour that have uh, have gone to live. Um, you know, there's so many layers to this that are still to be to be played out in terms of what the European tour is going to do, what the major championships are going to do. I know when I spoke to Greg Norman, uh, it, part of what we spoke about was what was going to happen maybe with the majors. And he sat down, uh, I didn't say sit down, actually, he was in contact with Fred Ridley, for example, from the Augusta National, which is one of the most powerful forces in golf and uh, was very, very clear in, uh, in, in Augusta's negative reaction to, to live. Now, we have not heard from Augusta yet. Uh, publicly, because obviously the Masters isn't until April, but uh, it was a pretty clear indication from Norman that uh, that Fred Ridley, who's the chairman at Augusta National, is very much against Live and very much aligned with the PGA Tour and the other tours around the world, including the European Tour. And I just came back from the British Open; they were denouncing the Live players. Uh, so Norman, you know, tries to do the best he can to to downplay where the money's coming from obviously that's a controversial topic uh you know the saudi money and 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 uh um you know the horrible human rights records that that saudi arabia has uh, he basically tries to pass that off as that this is not political and he feels like golf is good for you know making everything globally better i'm not sure if i 100 percent believe in that but uh, uh he was adamant about that he was also adamant about uh the fact that he, he knows what the PGA Tour is trying to do right now. In, in uh, I thought this is my, one of, maybe the most fascinating part of our conversation was when he spoke about what the tour is doing right now, which is lobbying in, in Washington uh, to try to get, you know, the powers that be in government to, to stay on their side, stand on their side, as they did back in the 90s when Norman was a player and tried to start up a world tour on his own to try to break away from the PGA tour, which he felt was monopolizing the names of the big, you know, high powered, high profile players, such as Norman at that time. And which is, you know, fast forwarding ahead. This is what Phil Mickelson's problem has been. And that's why he has tried to nudge the tour along. Norman told me that he basically knows the PGA tours playbook because he went through this in 1994, 95. And, and he's felt like they're doing the same exact things now that they did back then, which was try to lobby it, you know, at Capitol Hill. And uh, he said it's a much different time right now. And, and he doesn't think it's going to play out the same way this time. The difference, too, here is that Norman's, you know, world tour idea never got off the ground back in the 90s. This thing is off the ground right now. I've been there the last two days. I see the build out. I see, you know, we've all seen the players that have come on board there. They've got, you know very, very high profile players that have come over. And, you know, by all, you know, accounts by the people I speak to in golf, there's, there will be more to come. And uh, so this thing is here. It's not going anywhere. Uh, I suggested to Norman that, you know, it, there should be some sort of a compromise between the tours. And he said he completely welcomes that. Um, so that was kind of an interesting dynamic there. Well, listen, I mean, let's be honest. I mean, live golf is a threat to the PJ tour because the PJ tour does monopolize the, the, the entire calendar for golf. And uh, you know, they've, they've got deals with every single tele television network in America. 
across essentially 52 weeks of the year. So anything that Liv takes a bite out of is going to be an issue for the, for, for, for the PGA Tour. But I will say, and I'm fascinated to see what starts taking place tomorrow on Friday when this thing begins. The biggest problem I'm going to have, or I do have with Liv, frankly, is the results don't really matter. You know, I mean, I've just come back from the British Open and I discussed this with Norman. I said, you know, how are you ever going to get to the point where people are riveted on a Sunday watching the final round, you know, like they were at U.S. Open at Brookline last month and the British Open, you know, a few weeks, two weeks ago, you know, at St. Andrews where I was, you know, where Cam Smith made that great comeback and overtook Rory McIlroy. You know, the Live Tour, these guys are all getting basically free money. Most of them, it's all guaranteed money. And so it, there's just not really any intensity or passion or a feel that it really matters. You know, I feel like, you know, I've been there the last two days and, you know, writing stories leading up to this, including the Q&A that I did with Norman, you know, that's up on our website right now at NewYorkPost.com and, and uh, will be in the paper tomorrow. But I feel like once tomorrow comes, it's kind of like, what am I going to write about the next three days? Because nobody really cares who's leading after round one, you know, at this tournament. What I'm probably most interested in to watch tomorrow is the novelty of it. You know, it's 54 holes instead of 70, 72. It's a shotgun start. They're playing music all over the golf course. You know, they're obviously, you know, trying to cater and bring the young eyeballs, you know, in terms of the audience to to their 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 product. So, you know, I think that's going to be, I'll have a curiosity factor tomorrow. Saturday and Sunday, I'm not so sure. Uh, what I do think that this tour needs, and I discussed this with Norman in our Q and a is the first two events have been won by relative no names. I mean, obviously Charles Schwarzschild is who won the first event in, in, in London is a master's winner, but he hasn't really done much of anything in, you know, in about four, five or six, seven years. Um, so I really believe that this tour just to gain some more momentum and more, uh, more attention is to have one of these big names that they've thrown hundreds of millions of dollars at, like a Brooks Kepka or a DJ or or a or a Bryson DeChambeau or Phil Mickelson. I think one of the big guns needs to have a big week and, and be hoisting the trophy at the end of the week. Um, that to me will gain some more attention, and I, I think it will be a little bit more of a blow to the PGA Tour. And uh, the other element I'm looking to watch is, and I'll be writing about over the weekend is this live golf concept has a, has a team element to it. They've just announced they're going to 14 events next year. They've got 12 teams, four man teams, captains of teams. And it's going to be, I, you know, I wrote a story for tomorrow's paper about the fact that this, I'm not going to say this is a death blow to Ryder cup, but Ryder cup is really the most important event in golf. In my opinion, it, it generates the most passion. It's the, it's the one team event that everybody is riveted to. And if you've looked at what's taken place, the Live Golf Tour has got a roster full of, of Europe's best Ryder Cup players and most decorated Ryder Cup players, including Henrik Stenson, who was supposed to be the captain uh, of, the, of this 2024 Ryder Cup and was immediately stripped of his captaincy when he joined Live. He'll be playing this week for the first time. He just joined this a couple of days ago. Um, so I did write a story today about what's this mean to the Ryder Cup. I mean, these guys, Henrik Stenson, obviously stripped of his duties, Ian Poulter, you know, one of the most decorated and, 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 you know, I mean, successful players in Ryder Cup history, Sergio Garcia, the most, you know, most prolific point getter, Lee Westwood, who's been to 11 of them, you know, and probably was going to in line to be the next captain. All of these guys are live guys. Now what's going to happen to the European Ryder Cup team? I mean, you know, I make the point in my column today, you know, one of the, to me, one of the elixirs and one of the, like the kryptonite for Europe against the U.S. has always been its passion, the passion of the players there, always perceived to care much more about the Ryder Cup than the U.S. does. Well, now we've seen these guys make their choices for their, for, for money over passion and legacy. So now, you know, Stuart Sink, I know, was interviewed recently on the, uh, on the golf channel. And he said, you know, after seeing what's taking place, you start to wonder whether that was all a lie, you know, about how much these guys really cared about the Ryder cup. So there's so many layers to this. So much of this, I just, I did discuss with Greg Norman uh, in our Q and a, and I, I would, you know, suggest to our listeners to check it out because he was very candid on a number of topics and uh, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how this thing rides out over the weekend at, at Trump administer. Oh, by the way, you're throwing the former president, you know, parading around the property too into the 
circus-like atmosphere. Uh, you know, today you had him playing a pro-am with Bryson DeChambeau and, and Dustin Johnson. You had Caitlyn Jenner out there playing, uh, Charles Barkley. So it was, it was quite a sideshow out there, which is really what they're trying to create. You know, I mean, they need to have that kind of extracurricular stuff to draw the eyeballs. And they're trying to draw younger eyeballs and, you know, a different crowd than the, than the crowd that sits around on the weekends and watches CBS or, or NBC uh, cover the PJ Tour. So we'll see how it all plays out. There's so many elements to this just that are still unknown, undecided, that we still have to figure out. There will be lawsuits, trust me. Um, you know, I don't think these PJ Tour players are going to are going to settle for being suspended by the tour uh, much longer. So we'll see how that plays out. But for right now, the Live, Live Golf Tour is carrying on and, and we'll see how it goes this weekend.